Hey guys, welcome back to Romance Club, and we're playing some more Moonborn, and this is going to be the season finale of uh, Moonborn, so we're going to be doing episodes 7, 8, and 9, and I'm super excited, so let's go ahead and get this started. Um, it says, Mia helps catch the killers, the danger is behind, but for how long? Let's go ahead and hit play. I just got me some booty, so I feel like a lot better. <laughs> go ahead and do some more recording. I'm still sick, but anyway. The danger is behind. It seems that becoming a vampire is within my grasp. Damn it. Now you cannot escape from me. Mia backed away until she bumped against the wall. What should I do? Um. Try again for me. Shouldn't persuade him to leave amicably. Um. I'm sorry to tell you, my girl, but he, uh, I don't think he's leaving amicably. Let me try to get some info. Why are you doing this? Like everything, for the sake of being turned. And you? Did you come to the vampire club to dance? Certainly. Not to serve them. You think I'm a disgrace? I do not give a damn about morality when it comes to eternal life. Did your hosts honor you at least with their names? Do not doubt it. What are their names? Do you think you're smart? Do you want to know their names? Like in a stupid movie where the villain talks a lot instead of killing the hero right away, right? It's funny, because you really will die right now. Before I kill you, I'll fix your face. The man waved a knife, but the next moment something flashed from the side and he flew to the ground. <clears throat> Mia, I can't leave you alone for a minute, can I? This is the owner of the house where the masquerade was. Victor leaned over the man. Your name? Frederick. If you want to live, be smart, Frederick. Where's your master? I don't know, I swear. So you're useless to me. Victor took Frederick by the throat. His eyes widened with horror. Don't, please. Frederick grunted and became silent. Mia, go to the car. Frederick and I would talk a little more. Victor would kill him. Frederick would not hesitate to kill me, but does he deserve to die? Uh. <laughs> oh, no. Um. Shoot. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like, like, I kind of feel like he should, like, go to jail or something. Uh, I don't know. Like, you want to think that you would just be, like, fine with it, but I don't know that everybody really would. I don't know that I feel comfortable with that. I don't know. I'm going to say no. I, I can't allow this. Victor, were you allowing him by releasing him, though? Like, what? Oh, man. He was trying to kill you. Did you forget? And no, but there are enough victims among the people already. This is a mistake. Well, please, I ask. He will continue to hunt you. It seemed the vampire loosened his grip. Mia, wait by the car. Victor's eyes were hard and cold like steel. Victor approached in a few minutes. What? The girl's voice faltered. I'm not going to ask him that. I'm just going to say what's next. Let's go home. Me did not dare to ask what he did with Frederick. They got into the car. I took Frederick's phone, the one his masters called him on. But his call history has been deleted. There are no numbers in memory. Very strange, don't you think? I think that means that these vampires are very cautious. Okay, let's go. <laughs> You've been silent all the way. What were you thinking about? About our next move, and... And? Victor carefully looked at the girl. And it does not matter. <laughs> the cat came up to Mia, rubbing against her leg. <laughs> Cutie pie. Did you miss her? I am not surprised. Or he wants food. Take the fish in the fridge. Thank you. Oh, isn't the salmon too expensive? Well, this is the only fish we have. Okay, I'll return a spoiled kitty to the shelter. So, what about our next move? I'll go through it. First, Ethan will decide that you can be trusted. Just by looking at me? He is many years old. He is perceptive. Alright. Second, Patrick mentioned a bar where there is a vampire whom he called a scumbag. He's young, does not respect our customs and traditions, is dangerous, and he has a tattoo on his arm. 
Is this a vampire bar? Regular bar. But I'll go alone anyway. That's the third thing. There's still time before morning. Maybe I'll find out something. And you wait here. Feed your animal. And clean all, <laughs> clean all the fur up after it. Is that all? Almost. Do you remember the couple in black and red masks? Of course. How could I forget? Frederick served them. I'm not all that surprised. <laughs> Do you remember the tattoo on that guy's arm? Oh. How could I have missed it before? The ones who want to kill you are the same ones behind the attacks on the streets of the city. If I do not find them through the bar, let's try to dig into Frederick's phone. Victor laid the extractive phone on the table and left. Mia, feeding her friend from the shelter, sat down to work on the article. Where should I start? I switched to a nocturnal life. The work went well, and what she saw in the Vampire's Club inspired Mia to create interesting characters. By morning, the article was almost ready. It seems to be good. Is Victor here? A car stopped outside the house. The door slammed. And then a second. A third. Victor is not alone. Are Noel and Dustin here with him? Uh, uh-oh. The cat left his tail and ran away into the house. In the next second. Bam! The door flew open and the lock... The door flew open, the lock and splinters flew in different directions. Three people entered the house. Frederick, why the hell am I looking for you all around the city? Oh, they followed his phone. <laughs> and who's this here? Oh my god. <laughs> I gotta get pictures of these faces, dude. Well, hello. Long time no see. Oh goodness. Mia rushed after the pet, but has not even taken three steps before she was grabbed by her hair. Enough running. It was impossible to escape his grasp. Can I have her? Check the house. The vampire was unhappy but did not say anything and went to examine the other rooms. Do not panic. They don't know the truth about their attacks has already been revealed. You don't need to kill me. I won't reveal the vampire's secrets. The vampire with the tattoo went to the table, taking the phone. Where's the owner of this phone? I don't know what became of him. Funny. Frederick did not complete his task but he still brought us to the girl. Billy, so what do I what do I do with her? I don't get it. What do you mean, what? Same as we were going to do. There was no need to pop your little nose into other people's business. Um I Man, I kinda did, but kinda didn't. Like your little crazy ass girlfriend started attacking me. Uh, anyway. Focus, okay. <clears throat> Wait for the owner here to explain. It's gonna be worse for you. Um yeah, let's just stall. His name is Victor. Why wait, Billy? Wait a minute. The sun will soon rise. Billy approached me and took her by the chin. Did the master of the house murder my Frederick? Probably. I really don't know. But did you see him? My friend asked a question. I saw him tonight at the club taste of night. And what happened at the club? Victor spoke about something with him. What are you hiding? <laughs> Tell me everything, otherwise I'll entertain myself with you. You'll beg me to finish you off. You can't be silent, he isn't messing around. What were they talking about? Victor was asking about some nocturnal attacks. Damn, so they found us. There's no one else. Hey, why those faces? We've got a little problem. Looks like the other vampires know who is behind the night attacks. So we can't have fun anymore? You have one thing on your mind, half with it. Shut up, Dave. Stella, baby. Yes, we'll have to be a little more bored. Will they be angry with us because of some people? Yes, Prince Will would be a little dissatisfied. Wait a little until everything settles down. Honey, but can't you think of anything? No, but this is not for long. <laughs> Dustin appeared in the doorway. The next moment he was on top of them. Boom. Dave, the one holding Mia, flew into the wall. The girl fell to the floor. One against three? Do you want to play the hero? Billy and Stella began to flank Dustin from the sides. Directly in front of him was Dave. You must be Victor. No, he's not. I'm Victor. Victor appeared behind Billy, apparently coming into the house through another entrance. The vampires jumped at each other at the same time. Mia, covering her head with her hands, fled from the house. <clears throat> it was already light outside. The sun has risen. Victor, the sun. 
The light fell on the, on the walls and windows of the house and probably could penetrate inside. Vampires are vulnerable in the sunlight, but meanwhile they remain in the shadows. Rattling and clangs were heard from inside the house. Mia hid in the bushes. I hope Victor and Dustin will cope. Suddenly the second floor window shattered. Surrounded by glittering shards, a vampire jumped from the window. Stella, so they called her. The sun has risen already, high enough already to illuminate the whole yard. She's vulnerable in the sunlight, that's what Victor said. Stella landed in crunch. Oof. She writhed in pain, holding her leg. But a second later, the vampire was already crawling. Mia did not have much time to make a decision. Oh no, I would have got to ask me. It's not like a time. She shouldn't get away. Um, follow her. I can't restrain her, that's crazy. The vampire moved towards the shadows of the trees. The broken leg slowed her down, but she strode, she crawled without stopping and was growling with either pain or anger. No, I won't let you hide from the sun and regenerate your bones. In front of the house, there was a car that Stella and her friends most likely came in. Mia ran up to it. The key was in the ignition lock. Crawl, crawl. Give me a second and I'll show you. Mia started the car and stepped on the gas. Sharply turning the wheel, the girl stopped right in front of the vampire. You tramp? Go away. Stella tried to crawl around the car, but Mia backed the car, blocking her path again. The vampire jerked forward, but it was not hard for Mia to repeat their maneuver. I'll tear you to pieces. Not today, it seems. The house was quiet. Stella glanced at the windows and lurched again. This is for Megan. Mia turned the steering wheel and pressed the gas pedal. Oh. The front wheel ran over the vampire's hand and stalled. <laughs> Whoa. Mia? Are you sure you're okay? Yes, don't worry. Mia, even in the sunlight, to fight vampires, it's dangerous. I managed. Yeah, no worse than we did. With your help, all three of them were neutralized. The main thing was to get the big man out of the game. Get him out of the game? Don't be shy, you almost ripped his head off. Dustin was sitting away from the windows, hiding from the sun. In the light, unconscious and tied up, lie Billy and Stella. Day was near, but he wasn't tied up. Well, quite a friend you have, Vic. Don't even start, Dustin. Why not? I seem to have killed a vampire. For the sake of a girl who decided to tell the world truth about the vampire. Um, nobody asked you to rip his head off. I think Victor managed just fine without killing Billy, but um, you could do the same probably because you lost control of yourself. And so you have nerve to be sitting here talking shit. I told you I didn't like this bitch. <laughs> I really don't like this. I started to hunt her before she wrote the article. Stop it. Dustin, did you say that one is dead? Only one? The other two who two don't do not have any serious injuries. In the dark they'll wake up at once. And the third, this kind of head injury can kill even a vampire. He points to the big shaved man. Not that I'm sorry for him. He broke his my car's window shield with his head. See, <sighs> See? He's such a little a little pansy little I mmm mmm. I, I don't I don't like him. I, sorry. I'm sorry. I'll continue. Still, he's a vampire. What will everyone say? Oh my god. That you are a good fighter. I'm not into jokes. There could be problems. For killing a vampire, there could be, given that I attacked him, was not defending myself. But he broke in here, and before he attacked you in the car. Actually, you. All this has to be explained. Wow. Ah. Oh, yeah, I'll try and save him. Do vampires regenerate in the dark? Well, let's take him to the, to the dark. Are you sure? Yeah. What is up with you? Like, do you want to save your ass or not? So it's like... Why you got questions now? I do not want you to have more problems because of me. I've caused enough problems. Not really. Mia swallowed. If he survives, what awaits him? I do not know. All three will be judged. I do not think that he will ever be able to threaten you again. Then we have to try. Let him be judged. If he still survives. Dustin, take him by the hands. Let's take him to the basement. Mia was left alone, thinking about whether they were doing the right thing. Ah, <sighs> Dave killed Megan and several other people. But if we leave him to die, are we any better? <laughs> Five minutes later, the brothers returned. In any case, I do not think that Ethan Will will be against us. We stop the vampires who put our shared secret at risk. If you look at the situation like that, it seems like what is basically indebted to us. Oh my god, get over her. 
Do not tell him that. Me only now fully understood how close to death she was. But now everything seems to be all right. How did it happen that you two both came? Dick called and asked me to keep him company in his search. We left the bar when it was already light. I decided to wait until dusk here. So we arrived together. But where did these gun bags come from? That's a good question. If I got it right, he tracked Frederick's phone. What phone? Me explain about the meeting with Frederick. Do you still have the phone? It may come in handy when we explain the wood. After a raining chaos, um, it took a long time to locate the phone. Finally, Victor picked up some pieces of black plastic from the floor. Oh, shit. Oops. I found it, but it is broken. Damn it. What's the plan? Mia, you can go back to college. Now it's safe. And we will call. De we will deliver this group to the taste of night. I'll contact you later. The cat came into the room slowly and reservedly. Oh, poor thing. He examined the mess, walked straight over to Stella, waved his tail. Who's that? Long story. Mia will take him with her. This is a madhouse of some kind. Oh my god, get out. <laughs> Mia into the dorm. <laughs> it seems the danger is over. I will no longer be pursued. Megan's murderers will be punished. Then the, the cheerful Trisha interrupted her train of thought. Who's this cutie pie? <laughs> What's with that face? Well, he'll live here for now. Why for now? Let him stay forever. <laughs> Here's someone I can trust. Trista will always support me. So where's the critter from? A friend asked me to take care of him for a while. Friend? Oh, he isn't the only one you've been spending your time with lately, is he? I'm curious, who did you spend money with in the middle of the night? After all, I can't say anything to her. The truth is too unbelievable. May I promise we'll stay a secret even for Trisha. <laughs> He's an interesting guy, maybe a little too much. Relations with the likes of him are too exotic. It's like meeting with an alien. What are you saying? That's cool. <laughs> Dating someone because it's cool? There's the idea of the year. Maybe that's why you have problems with guys. Come on, what's wrong with the guy? I like this little shirt. It's cool. It's just that he's from another world. I can't think like that. Victor saved my life. Alright, you don't want to talk. We'll drop it. But you'll feel better if you if you whine to a friend. <laughs> Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. If I feel like it, I'll come to you immediately. I don't have another shoulder to cry on. You know that, right? I know. All these events in the last couple of days, Ted, then Megan, I really need to restore my, my, my peace of mind. What do you suggest? A movie, something old, romantic, with a handsome actor. We'll climb into bed, turn on the laptop, surround ourselves with tasty goodies. Alright, and what are we watching? Interview with the vampire? Not that. I've had enough of vampires. I saw enough at the masquerade. You choose. Well... Um... Hmm... I'm gonna go with Dirty Dancing. An all-time classic. I adore it. I'll turn it on and you prepare the food. <laughs> Have a little girl's night. To go along with the movie, we'll need... Popcorn... Grapes. Ooh. No nuts. I mean, why not have some popcorn? The classics will fell us. <laughs> the friends sat down to watch the movie. The heroes had a complicated yet romantic relationship. Romance is different in real life. When it comes to boys, both girls had an everything is complicated status. Oh, if only we could find someone who would always understand. Strong, faithful, and handsome. <laughs> Where will you park the horse? Oh, okay, no. That's cute. The horse? Well, yes. Kind of a white stallion, you know, like Princess Ride. <laughs> no, we'll leave the horse in L scented nights in the Middle Ages. A white sports car would suit me. Your high standards make me laugh. No matter what you say, you seem tense. I'm my usual self. Don't ever think it. Then I have an idea. Since we have no luck with guys, we're orchestrating the evening of romance for ourselves. What do you... Well, we already watched a good movie. Snacks aren't the most romantic dinner, but we can light candles and dance. There's a great soundtrack during the closing credits. Well, I don't know. If you want to. I want to. You need a distraction. Oh. Well, the candles are too much. It's daylight. Oh, come on. They're aromatic. Then light these. What are they called? 
um, Eastern Spices, Royal Sweetness, Secret of the Forest, Erotic Mantra. <laughs> um, <clears throat> maybe Royal Sweetness? Something gentle. All right. The film was over and Trisha took her hand friend by the hand. Get up. <laughs> the girl started to dance. Mia's spirits were light. Heavy thoughts vanished. Smiling, Trisha embraced Mia impulsively. It's so great that you exist. It's so important for me to have someone with whom everything's easy and simple. You know, Trish, I was thinking peaceful thoughts as well. I see how difficult it is for you. Holding each other in an embrace, the friends continued to sway to the sound of music. Trisha's hand slid just below Mia's waist. Wow. Trisha's getting carried away with a romance. You know what? Why not? I haven't done this before? Interesting. The fragrance of the candles made them dizzy. Being so close to each other's bodies, their pulses quickened. In the sunlight, Trisha's hair seemed to have a golden glow. How easily the sun turned a brunette into a redhead. It's beautiful. Um, silently admire. Put your fingers in her hair. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I don't know what I was trying to do. I feel like a little Mia would just kind of silently admire. Trisha gently kissed Mia, already felt freely sliding her hands over her body, lower on her back, then on her stomach. <laughs> Mia's breathing, uh, breathing quickened. Another movement in the dance and Trisha arched Mia back, firmly pressing her hips against hers. A gentle palm slid from Mia's belly up between her breast over her collarbone to her neck. Trisha pulled Mia closer and touched her lips. How soft and sensitive she is. Mia hugged her friend by the neck. Her lips were silky and a little sweet from lipstick. The outlines of the objects around were fuzzy. The sounds faded. Mia relaxed, giving in to tenderness. It seemed that the room was spinning slightly. The girl's fingers became bolder. Greedy hugs and tender tenderness intertwined. <laughs> The music ended and so did the kiss. Silence had a sobering effect. Embracing and smiling, the friends looked at each other. The magic haze of desire that cluttered their minds dispersed. It's for the best that the music is over. Who knows where it would lead us to? Although, Trisha is a great kisser. The walls and the furniture were gray in their contours again. This really is a romantic evening. Day. What's the difference? The key word is romantic. We'll have to repeat it. Well, as you say. Trisha winked slightly. I also like the playlist that's more authentic. No <laughs> Trish. While her friend took care of the food and kept the cat away from it, Mia lay down on the bed and fell asleep. That was cute. Mia woke up when it was already dark. We watched the movie together with Trisha, danced, and then somehow everything got twisted. It was so unusual. I think we're not the only friends to have such an experience. Mia stretched, got up. Should I change her hair again? I wouldn't know what to do with it, though. <laughs> Trisha was lying on her bed, flipping through a magazine. Did you sleep well? Yes, thank you. The friends looked at each other warmly. <laughs> yeah. Is everything okay? Of course, if this does not bother you. Not at all. I took your pet out and fed it. Thank you, you don't have to fuss with him. Oh, come on, he's so cute, I loved you. By the way, you got a message. Mia pulled out her phone and read the message. It was from Victor. The trial will be at midnight at the taste of night. Come. Uh, your opinion could have an impact. You look very surprised. Um, yes, that guy continues to surprise me. Just don't say that you'll go see him at night. I see. Careful out there. Oh, I'll be sure of that. Here, here, here. Come here. Your mistress leaves us alone. I'm not his mistress, just his temporary guardian. Now, did you to hear that? Only I love you. <laughs> Too bad Mia isn't even giving you a name. I need to get ready. The vampires are interested in my opinion. I think this should be taken as a sign of respect. In that case, I cannot be late. I must decide how to dress and have to do something with my hair. <laughs> um, okay, so we finally get new hairstyles. That was kind of cool. I also like that one. Ooh. I like the bob though. 
I appreciate probably getting some darker hair colors though. Um, I like that one a lot. Also, really like that one. I'm honestly I'm in between these two. Well, this one was cool. I kind of don't always like the style of it. And this looks really good on her. I'm gonna go with this one. Wow. Did you decide to change your look? I like it. That's it. I'm gone. Picking up her purse, Mia left the room. Approaching the nightclub of the vampires, Mia saw a car. Two girls were walking towards it. One moved somewhat uncertainly as if in a dream. What's wrong with her? The second nudged her companion along from behind. Oh wow, she's gorgeous. Mia thought that the sleepy one looked at her pleadingly. She obviously did not want to go on, go, but she walked on. A couple more steps and they'll get into the car. Mia already guessed what was happening, but could not just walk by. Hey, is everything okay? Oh, uh, what? I do not remember. Oof. Where am I? Who are you? She backed away from the car. Come back. The voice sounded authorita authoritative, but the girl turned and hurried away. At first, her legs barely obeyed her, but after a few meters, she was nearly running. When the escape victim disappeared around the corner, the car door opened. Damn it. Oof. Agatha, you still have weak hypnosis skills. It's not good, as you see. I'm sorry. Mia decided that she should leave, and the sooner the better. However, she could not move. The prince looked into her eyes. There was nothing pleasant in that glance, but it was impossible to break away from it. Work on it, Agatha. Subduing a person's will is a useful skill for a vampire. Continuing to look at Mia, the prince began to approach. One girl decided to save another. Very noble, but very stupid. He stopped a few meters away. Everything around him except his face seemed to vanish in fog. Mia was slightly nauseated. Her body was weighed down and disobedient, as if it were a stranger's. She wanted to faint, but nothing happened. Come here. I do not want to. I would not go. No, no, no. Mia took a step, staggered. Another step. Closer. His voice sounded as if it came from underwater. It became dark around. There were only the burning eyes of the pale fa face of the vampire. You will have to replace the one who escaped. You see, girl, I was going to have my supper. And I'm not used to changing my plans at all. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's crazy. Alright. Let's go ahead and continue on to episode 8. Play a little bit better. I got me like a hauls. A little bit. Set up some aromatic stuff. Okay, Mia tends to trial Billy, makes important decisions concerning relations with Victor and Simon, and then fate catches up with her. Uh-oh. But first, let's figure out what happened with the prince. The trial. Mia opened her eyes, screaming. The last thing she remembered were the fangs of the European prince near her neck. But now the girl was in the vampire club. Dustin was near. Hush. Do not shout. It's all right. You here? Where is he? Where is the prince? His name is Angel Mora. He left. He is already far from here. Shivering with fear, Mia grabbed her bag. The girl began to examine her neck in the mirror. Justin gently put his hand on her shoulder. Stop it. What are you doing? He did not bite me? No, everything is fine. He didn't have time. Victor went out to meet you. And there was more with you. Another minute and nothing could have been done. Angel Moore didn't want to let go of you. If Victor had to fight him, nothing good would have come out of it. But it was settled. Would intervene and agreement of sorts was reached. Why did Ethan Wood help? We've helped him, sort of, to catch those vampires. It was a debt of gratitude. Victor approached. I'm glad that you came to your senses. And so am I. Um... 
why did I do what he ordered? Um, will he come back? That's what I want to know. The girl was still shaky. She continued to instinctively touch her neck. No, he went to the airport. He will soon be in Europe. He definitely will not seek revenge. Mia, you're certainly an unusual girl. At least because of how often you get into trouble. And yet an ancient vampire prince will not waste his time on you. That was a very strange compliment, Dustin. The good compliments. Go to Victor. Dustin handed Mia a cup of strong coffee. You could use one right now. And there's another thing. This Billy is a bastard. I hate the likes of him. I ensured his support. Yeah, yeah. When his face decided, you can count on my support. They're waiting for us. Come on, Mia. You'll be embarrassed if the vampires notice your weakness. Um. I can hide it. Any girl should be cunning. I'm completely capable of hiding my feelings. Mia stood up, shook her head. Let's go. They went to the VIP lounge of the club. Civil vampires had already gathered here. Some Mia met when she was in the taste of night last time. However, most however she saw for the first time. There were also the defendants. Billy, Stella, and Dave. The big man survived? Yes. This can play into our hands. Sorry, I'm just crunching. <laughs> okay. Megan's killer stood a little apart so everyone could see them well. And here's the Shadow Raven. Hi. Good evening. Hello. You look good. He seems to be happy to see me. Or is it just politeness? How are you? Okay, it seems. Thank you. <laughs> Monica. Here's someone whose support I definitely shouldn't count on. Other vampires also looked at me without affection. These three. The owner of the club pointed towards Billy and his companions. Endangered the mystery of our existence. Before I decide, I want to hear the opinion of the audience. Howard, what do you say? The one called Howard came forward. They are young and only poorly control their hunger. Their instincts are very strong. I doubt, however, that they, will, will, they really try to restrain themselves. Therefore, they must answer in full for what they did. The audience started to speak out. As punishment, expulsion from the city, execution, imprisonment, and forgiveness were offered, which in Mia's college would be called a severe reprimand. What do you say in your defense? Billy stepped forward. Are vampires judged for killing people? Maybe we'll start talking about whether it's permissible to drink their blood at all. We are higher beings and we do what we want. You're being judged for carelessness. Then what is she doing here? Billy looked at Mia. Mia? My words can influence Wiz's decision. I doubt it's true. But I cannot be silent when the prince is asking. I need to be... Uh... Uh... <laughs> Dang it. Why are you gonna be nice? Uh, forgiven. If they are really young vampires and do not know how to cope with themselves, it's worth giving them the opportunity to become normal. Billy and Stella looked at each other in surprise. Dave did not seem to understand what she was talking about. The thirst for blood is in their nature, right? Let them learn to control themselves. Someone turned them and did not take care of their upbringing. That is true. <laughs> Noel made a motion as though applauding. Revenge won't bring the dead back to life. So that you can live differently, if it does not help, then the punishment will be completely different. I do not agree with this mortal. These idiots have put us all at risk. You cannot forgive them. I'm voting for exile. And I support Mia. She said it right. I like Mia's offer. Howard looked at the girl coldly. What's your name in the magazine? Shadow Raven, right? Your article was very careless. You know too little about us and you will never understand. However, he turned to the other vampires. As far as I know, it was she who saved Dave's life. The girl is loyal to us, even helped to catch Billy. And if so, 
I'll probably support her proposal. Only as a repayment of debt. Mr. Miller, I do not know what will be the appropriate punishment. Therefore, I will refrain. Well, I'll think. Wood left the room and Billy hugged Stella. I wonder what they're talking about. Uh, yeah, I want to know. Mia listened. Billy stroked his friend's hair. Are you afraid? I'm afraid. Don't be. We'll get out of this. Everything will be fine. Promise? You know me. I'm always lucky. Billy kissed her. All the vampires delicately pretended that they did not hear anything and did not notice. Stella nestled against her friend. <laughs> Keep calling him friend. She felt many eyes watching her. In regard to the Myrtle girl, not all the vampires consider politeness mandatory. They're staring at me. You're fine. If Billy is not executed, will he want revenge? I do not think he will be allowed to stay in the city. Victor... Do you think I'm fair to them? Um... It's hard to see it from a vampire's point of view. Um, because she, she said it, I hadn't thought about it that way. Um, that, you know, they weren't properly trained. And so they didn't know anywhere. There's kind of like teenagers lashing out, even though they might be like 100 years old or something. I don't know. That was interesting. Um, why did he decide to listen? Um, do you think I'm fair? I'm curious about, you know, why he asked my opinion. He maneuvers, avoiding sticking points and dealing with other vampires. There are those who respect people, take them into account. But? But this can only be for the sake of keeping decorum. The decision is his. What we will decide after listening to everyone. Then they will say that he is a just and reasonable prince. So I came here for nothing. No, I said it could be decorum. It might not be. Ethan Wood is quite young for a prince. He is considered progressive. Perhaps he decided to rethink his approach to communicating with people. Can I ask you more? Um, I can figure out where Patrick did it. He's kind of a cool dude. Let me learn about this Howard. One of the main vampires in the city. Old, clever, wanted to get the prince title, but we do not respect him that much. I do not like him. Do not burden your mind. He has a bad temper. Victor looked away. Ethan went his back. All were silent, waiting for the what prince would say. My decision is this. But, uh, what flu is that? The decision of the prince was influenced by my previous choices. Billy will be allowed to stay in the city. I will forget his misdeeds if he does not harm any other vampires. Stella is innocent. She will be unrestricted in her actions. However, I recommend that she does not ruin relationships with anyone. <laughs> Dave, your verdict is banishment. I give you a day to leave the city. It could be worse. Billy and his friends were taken out of the hall. Hmm. I doubt that's into that, but um, I guess we'll just have to see. Victor waited for everyone to disperse. Mia, are we going? Yes, I see no reason to stay. However, she did not manage to leave Taste of Night immediately. Here she goes. Victor, are you seeing off your delicious girlfriend? Monica, what an inelegant pun. <laughs> I mean, she's okay. Pretty. Oh, did you think I wanted to drink her blood? Come on. I wouldn't eat the likes of her. She's below me. <laughs> Do not provoke me. As you wish. You know, Victor, I'm ready to fulfill any of your requests. Jesus. <laughs> the vampire looked at Mia. So, Shadow Raven, is that you? I heard about your article. I do not understand why Ethan Wood would not know you for it. And you wouldn't understand. The work of Princess is beyond, is beyond you. It's time for us to go. Bye-bye. I'll wait for our next meeting, Victor. Jesus. She's crazy. How are you? I was worried, of course. But I'm better now. I think... I showed character. I was able to avoid conflicts. Um... I was able to avoid conflicts. It's kind of my ideal. Yes, you did very well. I'm sorry that you have to go through all this. 
but you are wise and, and judicious. You easily regain your composure. It's worthy of respect. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the compliment. Although, to be honest, I still can't ca calm down. Would you like a drink? We won't return to the club, of course. Maybe my place? I wonder. He invited me to his place, not to another establishment. Maybe he's decided to seduce me, or does it mean nothing? Why not? <laughs> Let's go. They got into Victor's car. <laughs> Is she happy about being seduced? I don't know. By the way, you're a great driver. Experience. Just experience, Mia. If you want, I can teach you. Victor was silent again on the road. <laughs> I didn't think you'd have time to get the place in order. Take a seat. Victor lit the fireplace. The light from the fire is more pleasant than the electric one, don't you think? It was really cozy in the dimly lit room. Yes, you're right. What about some wine? The red Italian from Benito would do as well for us now. Um, sure. <laughs> the one was unparalleled. Um, you have a great palate. Oh, she wasn't saying um, she was like, mmm, you know, like it's enjoyable. <laughs> you might try out being a sommelier. I don't, I don't know. Taking his glass, Victor sat down next to her. The smell of his cologne tickled her nose pleasantly. The light from the fire trembled on their faces and played with shadows. It seemed that time had stopped. He's not a boy. You cannot play with him. And if he starts flirting, I can hardly keep myself together. Now will be the time to leave. Uh. I mean... Is she saying that she wants to leave? <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's, let's just stay. Let's just, let's just roll with it. They listened for a long time to the crackling of the firewood in the fireplace. A fresh night breeze came in through the open window. Victor took Mia's hand. His touch burns with cold, but somehow I like it. The vampire pulled the girl closer to him. Lifting Mia's chin with his thumb, he said, Special. Absolutely special. And today I want you to listen to me. I know it's something you do not always succeed at. Try. <laughs> Jesus. Mia nodded uncertainly. Let's start with something simple. He covered her lips with a kiss. Softly at first, Victor added power and passion to it. His passion became almost brutal. A button was torn off Mia's clothes and flew into the darkness. Losing herself in his caresses, the girl did not notice how Victor took off her clothes. Oh goodness. But he himself only unbuttoned his shirt. Victor, that's not fair. For a moment, Mia became uncomfortable. Lie down. Victor, the vampire ordered in a soft, velvet, yet firm voice. Shut up. Now I want to hear you moaning with desire. Mia lay down on the sofa. Wonderful. Victor kissed her toes, her thin ankles, her knees, and went higher. Mia writhed in lang languor. Teetering on the verge of reality, she gasped for air. She had to bend or beg for more intimacy. Why does he not let me touch his body? Waves of desire drove her crazy. Mia obeyed, surrendering to the cold hurricane of passion. <laughs> the world collapsed into a void. A slight convulsion passed over the girl's body. Victor smiled contently. <laughs> Bringing out the covers, he carefully wrapped the girl in them. Before you overthink it, let me explain. You've experienced a lot today. I do not want you to regret being intimate with me. And this then is not intimate? Mia, I am many years old, and if I am with a woman, then I'll want all of her. Every single bit. After this, the question of a serious relationship may arise. What if it's a problem for you? You need time. I'll wait. It's hard for me to talk about feelings. I have not done this for a very, very long time. Believe me, I... You are for me. You've become very dear to me. I have to leave for a while. You'll have time to think. Here are the keys to the house. You can stay here for now. If you regret it, just give them back to me at our next meeting. I'll understand. I'll try to stay your friend. But Victor, that's it. Today you obey me, so sleep for now. 
Victor sat down next to her and stroked me his hair for a long time. Um. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, it's one of those relationships. Okay. I can play this game. Mia snorted, but did not say anything. He's so weird. He's not afraid of risking his life for me or getting into trouble, but so cautious when it comes to a relationship. There's no middle ground with him. It's either yes or no. And if I still regret it, maybe it's he who needs time to think. <laughs> Mia did not notice how she fell asleep. Okay. He's an interesting one, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I just don't know how I feel about it. We'll see. I do, actually, I do need time to think on that. <laughs> Mia's day began with a gorgeous breakfast and a note. The beauty of your body is worthy of Sandro Botticelli's brush. His Venus is your pale shadow, Victor. And a postscript. Try to be careful. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Having finished her breakfast and taken a shower, Mia went to college. Trisha met her friend with a question. Did you spend the night with the guy you told me about? Yes, should I have called? And wake me up? Don't. Who am I now, your mom? Mia was worried a little about how things would develop with Trisha. But Trisha did not complicate anything. She just kissed me on the cheek. It's all good, it seems. Our friendship didn't suffer from my romantic dance. So what did you do there? Oh, but by the way, um, unfortunately, Trisha is not um, an actual love interest um which is kind of sad because she's gorgeous and <laughs> i would be interested but yeah she's not an actual ally an ally that you can like a full-on one that you can pursue like as far as you know in-game goals but yeah <clears throat> so what did you do there stop it well did you do it trisha um i mean something happened any details? Tell me. <laughs> what, are you, what you're thinking about didn't happen. Only kisses and caresses. He's not rushing me. He gives me time to think. About us, and in general. It could mean that this guy is serious. Hmm. Yes, it looks like it. I almost envy you. Trust me, Trisha, it's too early to envy. Could he be bad at kissing? I'm kidding. <laughs> Take your cat. Oh, hello kitty. I'm going shopping. All right, go on. Mia sat down at the laptop to finish the article. Um, now we need to write that the attacks have been stopped so that the news is both interesting for the readers and crystal clear for the vampires. At noon, the phone rang. Hello? Hello, miss. This is the witness from the shelter. Do you remember me? <clears throat> yes, of course. Good afternoon. I'm calling to say that I'm ready to take the animal back. Go ahead and bring it. I'll text you on your address. We looked at the pet. Oh. The cat was rubbing against the girl's leg, obviously enjoying it. You know, I'm keeping my cat. Not a pet's with you forever. Awesome. Keep it, of course. Really? Can I? Of course. He found a family. It's wonderful. Thank you very much. Bye. Mia hung up. Well, that's it. Now you're mine. The cat jumped on the table and lay down on the laptop. I must give you a name. Um, I usually name all of my pets Axel, but um, for the kitty, I always like Moonbeam. Get used to it. Now you're Moonbeam. Well, we need to go to the office again. Once she was ready, Mia went to the Supernatural Daily. Hello, how are you, Mia? Hello, well, thank you. Is Mr. Bo here? Yes, do you have new material? You might as well email it. I decided to come in and see everyone. Mia, I'm glad to see you. Hello. I'll call Mr. Bo. The editor stepped aside, winking slyly at Mia. Oh, Camilla, the matchmaker. Although, probably, I should thank her. She wants the best for me. Meaning? I would not mind getting to know you better. Didn't I mention it? Oh, Simon, 
aren't you rushing things? Don't be scared. I'm not going to push you. I'm just being honest with you. Clearly, it could take a bit for Camilla to find Mr. Bo. I'll go to my desk. Hello, Mia. Mr. Bell, you might find it interesting. Your story about the vampire masquerade is popular with readers. We received letters asking for more. That's great. And I brought a new article. Great. On the flash drive? <laughs> it's a little, a little comment. Where'd she get that from? <laughs> I'll read it today. The owner of the magazine left. Camilla pretended that she was completely absorbed with pouring tea. Simon reappeared. Mia, I want to suggest... Suggest the way? I need to take a couple of good sunset shots. Would we go for, would we go for a drive, choose a place? Um, we would go for a drive, choose a place. Do you want to keep me company? Is it really work-related, or is it another trick? What are you talking about? Just admire the views. I'll take some shots, that's all. Oh, I really find it hard to believe there will be no flirting. First the plant, now the sunset. Yes, his eyes are very playful. On the other hand, it's been ages since I was around ordinary guys. Definitely, I need a break from vampires. Yeah? Yes, let's go. With pleasure. I'll pick you up in the entrance in five minutes. The old pickup stopped in front of her with a creak. Come on. The girl looked doubtfully at the once orange truck. Won't his tailgates fall off? Come on, she'll all live us. The photographer knocked mercilessly on the roof of the relic. Well, if so, let's go. Um. Hold up. But this does not look like a place for this dress. <laughs> hold up, let's change our clothes. I think this is a bit more fitting for this. Oh, uh, yeah. We have this rig out as well. I kind of like that. Hmm. That's super cute. Well, I haven't seen this rig out in a little bit. Let's go with that. Cool, 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 cool. Finding a place for a good shots was not the easiest thing to do. They had to go far. Simon kept chattering diligently, entertaining Mia. After hitting a pothole, the pickup suddenly made a sputtering sound, lurched, and died. <laughs> no need to panic. We'll figure it out. God, here we go. The photographer got out of the car, opening the hood with a clang. Clouds of steam immediately rose from inside. What a pickle. The radiator's dead. And? We need to call our roadside assistance. It would take us a while for them to reach us. So we're stuck. Don't worry. It's about three hours, at most six. Great. Look, she rarely breaks. It's a very reliable car. I can see. I can see the aura of reliability in these clouds of steam. <laughs> Don't lose heart. I'll call for help, but while we wait, I'll take pictures of you. It'll make time fly. Make the call. Simon took out his phone, dialed the number, put it to his ear. Then he looked at the screen and walked away a little further. Even further. Oh, gosh. What now? Here's the thing. <laughs> oh, no! Simon! There's no signal. Are you kidding me? No, but don't worry. Me and checked our phone. There was no signal. We'll figure something out. <laughs> That's a terrific phrase. In the wilderness at sunset. Horror moves and thrillers are about sur survival being again like this. Stop it. Do you have any constructive ideas? I can go back to the main road. I'll definitely get some signal there. Aha. And leave me alone? Brilliant. Simon, are you aware that, the no that in the spirit of the genre, no one survives doing that? We can go together, but it's far. <laughs> um... I don't know how to fix the car. Let's just walk back together. Simon took a bag from the inside and closed the truck. Shall we? They walked for a long time and slowly as Mia stumbled over the bumps and tree roots that were sticking out. How did we even get here? It's impossible to walk. I'm telling you. I have a supercar. Oh god. Oh. It's getting dark fast. It's always like that in the forest, right? That's not the point. Let's move faster. <laughs> Look up. Mia raised her eyes. The whole sky was covered with heavy, low-hanging clouds. A drop of rain fell on the girl's face. Quick, run. We need to find shelter. Maybe we'll go, b go back to the car? We passed the cliff, remember? It's closer. Yeah. 
Come on, quickly, quickly. The earth was getting softer and more slippery. Mia slipped, but Simon did not let her fall. Oh, that's cute. Holding her hand tightly, he pulled her after him. Wet branches whipped their faces. We're close. A lightning struck and illuminated the cliff where the, they could hide from the rain. <laughs> Having reached the hiding place, Simon immediately looked at Mia. Are your hands and legs alright? The girl, completely soaked, started to shiver. There are dry branches here. I light up a fire. The warmth and the light of the fire lifted their spirits. Looks like we're here at least until the morning. There's still no signal. Is there any good news? Sure. I have some coffee and sandwiches in my bag. You want some? Mia was terribly hungry. <laughs> Having eaten a simple dinner, the girl looked at the streams of rain, flickering the light of the fire. She was shivering. Simon moved closer and hugged Mia. <laughs> the photographer gently caressed her shoulder. He's not really my type, or is he? Oh, God. <laughs> I usually go with the flow, but I can't with him. Not this time around. <laughs> Maybe a different time. I'm going to move away. Are you in your right mind? Simon, I had enough adventures for today. I'm sorry, it's just warmer this way. I'm not that cold to warm up like this. Okay, I understand. The photographer brought more firewood. Time dragged on. Mia thought about the events of the past days. Simon's snoring interrupted her meditations. It's all the same to him. He even fell asleep. <laughs> oh my god. In the morning, the weather was fine. Mia and Simon reached a place where they could get reception. The photographer remained away for help, and the girls soon returned to civilization. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mia, what happened to you? You're all scratched dirty. I'll call an ambulance right now. Stop, stop. Everything's fine. There's no need. No panic. I just went, to, went with Simon to take some shots of the sunset. The car broke down, then a thunderstorm. Mia looked cautiously in the mirror. The things she saw did not make her happy. <laughs> Sunset with Simon? Girlfriend, you like you went on a bender. And you said that photographer wasn't your type. Mia, you understand that outings like that will complicate your relationship with that other guy? What's his name, by the way? Victor. Trisha, don't worry about me. Everything's fine. <laughs> Mia washed herself and went to bed. That's some break from the adventures, I'll say. <laughs> Oh my god, well at least it's a, a relatively, I want to say normal, but well considering everything she's been doing, I, I would say it is relatively normal. She fed the eternally hungry cat. Then she checked her email, there was nothing from Mr. Bell. It's too late to call him. Okay, tomorrow I'll ask about the article. Mia checked on the food situation. Did Trisha go shopping yesterday? And what did she buy? There were chocolates, yogurts, bananas, and cola. I should go for some normal food. There was a convenience store near the dorms. Approaching me, I saw a man in the shadow of the building. I don't like him. They call people like that shady. Oh. <laughs> that is shady as hell. <laughs> Look at him. The girl slowed down. It's better to be safe. It's a shame to stumble upon some regular robber having experienced all those adventures with vampires. It did not seem like the man had any interest in Mia. And yet the girl turned aside. She hid behind a tree, deciding to wait a little. He won't hang around the entire night, will he? Mia hid for 20 minutes. Hey! Will you leave at last or not? A boy of about 12 appeared on the street. He was walking, whistling, looking at the houses around. Oh, poor little cutie pie. <laughs> Noticing him, the strange man emerged from the shadows. Mia saw the glint of steel in the man's hand. Well, how did I manage to get myself into this mess again? The man was catching up to the boy with long strides. The girl knew a, far more se a few more seconds and the boy would die. I saved the girl from the vampire prince. How can I let some maniac kill a child? Run! The boy turned toward the shaman with a shout. The boy saw the knife. Oh. 
The man made a lunge, but the bus, some miracle, his victim darted from under the whistling blade. Oh, jeez. Look at that face. The next moment, the kid rushed to the side. The stranger looked at Mia with hatred and went towards her. The boy ran very fast. Mia was sure that the maniac would not catch up with him. Yep. Don't even know this pup, most likely. Well, I would have passed by if I were you. It's a shame that I'm so young and beautiful. You don't want that. It's about time to hide. Um, hide... I don't know, around the corner? Mia reached the corner of the nearest house. There was only one place to hide. Behind the car. Mia crossed behind the big car and held her breath. Come out. You can run, but you can't hide. The girl bent down, looking in between the wheels. The man's legs were not far away. Do you like to play hide and seek? He was approaching slowly but confidently, as if he knew where Mia was. Creeping, she began to move away. <laughs> where are you? Suddenly it became quiet. Where did he go? A shadow fell on the car behind which the girl was hiding. Mia turned sharply. He stood right in front of her. Somebody! Mia tried to call for help. A shout might be heard by a random passerby. But she stopped because a stranger bared his teeth. Oh, shoot. Quiet. The girl could not talk about her acquaintance with Victor and the rest. The vampire suppressed her will almost as easily as Prince Angel Mora. Save someone and perish. It's so out of date. No one will appreciate or understand it. Hearing about your death in the morning news, people will not even stop eating breakfast. Though understanding the meaningless of it, Mia tried to run. Her instinct did not allow her to stop resisting. Was this really it? Fang sank into Mia's neck. The girl realized that she had regained the ability to scream, but a cold hand was pressed against her mouth. The vampires clenched his jaws even more. It was getting dark in Mia's eyes. She quickly awakened. The girl suddenly realized that she was lying on the ground. It's fate. It was a hope it was supposed to happen back then at the masquerade. A dark silhouette hovering over her was the last thing she saw. Ain't that crazy? Ain't that crazy? Oh man. Is that the end of season one? I can't remember. Or was that episode eight? Okay, it's one more episode. Oh, man. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's finish up. Mia gets to know Max, a guy no less strange, uh, no less strange than vampires. However, this is not the only surprise for the girl. So, they gave away that she's about, I mean, she's our main character. We knew she has plot armor, but still. Let's get started. And figure out what's gonna happen to me now. <laughs> Max Fall. She was alive. The excruciating pain in her neck was proof of it. Mia felt someone's presence. Somebody was near her. She was too weak to open her eyes. Voices as if from underwater. Do you remember his face? No, there was no time for it. I was figuring out how to help the girl. Oh, kitty pie. <laughs> oh, you were figuring it out. You just got scared and ran to get me. Knock it off, Max. You did everything right. Otherwise, one of you would already be dead. Yes, she would not survive anyway. It's a pity. She's beautiful. The girl again plunged into darkness where she felt restless and uncomfortable. <laughs> When Mia reemerged from non-existence, it was very hot, painfully hot. Listen, is this normal? I don't know. Bring some ice. The girl had a, this picture, though. <laughs> anyway, the girl had a fever. She needed water. <laughs> what? It took a lot of effort to pronounce the one word. Water. Sean. Water, fast. Oh my god. He is gorgeous. Oh, holy crap. <laughs> Mia didn't find out whether or not they brought her water before she fell into darkness again. It was stuffy and bad in there. The pain and thirst tormented her. But suddenly, a breath of freshness. Someone carefully wiped the girl's brow with a cool towel. Something pleasant, icy, 
Pleasantly icy touched her temples. You just hold on, okay? Do not die. Waking again, Mia realized that someone was going for her throat. She opened her eyes in panic, but saw only vague silhouettes. Um, grab by touch. Mia threw out her hand, clutched at something warm and twitching, and squeezed. Uh, oh, damn, easy, easy, let him go. Someone unclenched Mia's fingers. Do not be afraid. Do you hear? We are not enemies. They took her by the shoulders. Calm down. Sean, are you alive there? <laughs> it seems so. That's one hell of a grip. How? How? She's turning, Sean. The strength that the girl had felt just left her. <laughs> Mia was still between sleep and reality. Her neck seemed to be burning. Her body ached. Her joints ached. Her head was splitting. And someone shouted, making it even worse. The scream drilled into her brain. The crowd was mournful, but it only angered the girl. She felt terrible, and they would not let her sleep. Someone will call the cops for sure. Yes, we must take her away. Take the keys and drive the car. Mia realized that this was her cry of pain. What's wrong with me? Hot tears rolled down her cheeks. The girl passed out, but not for long, it seems. Hey, wake up. She opened her eyes. Where am I? Safe, at my place. I'm Max Fall. You need to change. I would help, but I fear you'll be against it. What? What's wrong with me? Don't you remember? You were wounded by a guy. Now we have to go. Where? Where they can help you. Just need to change clothes first. I will leave the clothes on the sofa. I'll be back in five minutes. Mia lying on the couch, looked at herself. There was blood on her clothes. I remember. Yeah, how could you forget? Quite. Fang sank to Mia's neck. The girl realized that she had regained the ability to scream, but a cold hand was pressed against her mouth. Mmm. The, the vampire clenched his jaws even more. Mia sat up and grabbed her neck. It was wrapped tightly. It's not nonsense. I was bitten by a vampire. What will happen to me now? Oh, God. And who is this Max? He said I'll get help? She looked at the door behind which the guy had disappeared and felt him. She realized that he was definitely there. She could not describe it in words. How to explain a completely new sense as real as vision or hearing? Someone else is with him. Um... Focus on the new sensation. Mia closed her eyes, trying to concentrate. At first, nothing happened, but after a few seconds, the girl realized that there were two individuals behind the door. Men, or rather, a young man and a teenager? Then she sensed their moods, their emotions. It was like eating chocolate with your eyes closed you can't see, but you know exactly what you're eating. They are grateful to me, and they are also worried, especially the younger one. Suddenly, the new feeling left Mia. The girl was her old self again. What is this? Am I turning into a vampire? It was not the time to panic, and Mia tried to calm down. I need to change clothes, otherwise they'll decide that I cannot cope on my own. But what is with me? She remembered how, half delirious, she almost strangled someone. It seems it was Sean, the younger of the two. Mia was too weak and depressed to feel guilty. I need their help. Moreover, they seem to know about vampires. This guy, Max, said something about turning. The girl looked at the clothes they left. Oh, they are. Oh, well, well the shirt's really cute. I don't know about the pants. A little jumpsuit. I don't really like it, though. Oh, yeah, this one. This is really cute. I picked it. I obviously picked this one before. And some little denim overalls, but I don't like them. Oh. Oh. I don't like that for it. I don't, like, I don't think I like this sort of shape. I love this, though. <laughs> I love the top. Oh, man. I obviously told this one last time, and it's cute. So is this. I don't know. Do I want to go for a different look? Oh, I love that top. This is super cute and totally my style. <laughs> Um, 
I think I'm gonna go with this one again. I don't know. It, it just calls to me. I like it. The size fits. These clothes are new. Did they buy them for me? How long have I been unconscious? I mean, I shout it. I'm ready. The door opened. Max into the room and... Hi, remember me? I'm Sean. The girl remembered. He was the one that the vampire wanted to kill. Why a knife? What? Why did they come on to cut him? After all, it was... Mia did not finish. And if they don't know about vampires, what if I misheard about turning? Or they were talking about something else? Who? She did not have to answer. Red and blue lights flickered outside. The boy looked out the window. Max, the police just pulled up. We better leave. And as soon as possible. Hiding from the police? Um... Explain. <laughs> Okay, let's think of the facts. We obviously heard them when she was screaming. Um, and we realized that probably a neighbor who called the police. But we know that. How much would she know? Um, in her mind, she knew that she was screaming bloody murder. Um, I feel like this is the same thing as the sleeping pills. <laughs> It's like, if they wanted to hurt her, they could have just left her there at the store. You know? So if they're hiding from the police, it's probably a good reason. And once again, she did hear herself screaming. Um, so let's just bounce. I'm not asking about your car problems. Only, I must warn you, it seems I cannot go fast. Let me help you. And about the police. We're not hiding. We're hiding you. Mia wanted to ask what he meant. But her vision suddenly grew dark and she began to settle to the floor. I'll take her. Faster, Sean. Can I drive? No way. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. It's so pretty. Where are we? Mia opened her eyes. Lying on the grass, Max was seated nearby. I need to take more pictures. Oh my god. <laughs> Out of town, I decided that fresh air would do you better than sitting in a car. The girl looked around. An SUV was nearby. Sounds of traffic from a nearby road were audible. And Sean? He's here somewhere. He went to stretch his legs. He screamed in my house. The neighbors, of course, called the police. It's better not to show your neck to the cops now. Me agree with him, by and large. I guess it will be difficult to explain the origin of the wounds. Why didn't Max want to show me to the police? How can I tell if he knew that the attacker was a vampire? You look bad. I feel even worse. I'm shivering and my whole body hurts. As if a truck ran me over. Do you understand what's wrong with you? In general terms. And you? Yes, you ran into a Um, hmm. Vampire? They carefully looked at each other. Not surprised? Do you believe in them? It seems that we both know, rather than believe. Yes, well... It'll be easier than expected. I wonder how you know about them. Mia decided not to rush into details. I shouldn't tell. In short, I know some of them. Really? And the one who bit you? No, he wasn't at the store because of me. I know. You saved Sean. Thank you. I don't fully understand what happened there at all. You stopped the vampire and he decided to bite you for it, right? He was supposed to kill you. I suppose I scared him and you survived. Everything makes sense, right? Only there's an inconsistency. He turned you. Well, made you a vampire. I get it. Mia's heart skipped a beat. She hoped that things were not so dire. It doesn't happen by chance. Vampires only turn someone on purpose. Something is wrong here. You know this for sure? Yes. By the way, can you tell me your name? Oh, I'm sorry. Mia. Oh, he's so cute. Look at his little face. Mia. Good name. I like it. Who are you? How do you know about vampires? The guy was not in a hurry to answer. Max? Soon we will have to move on. <laughs> Sean came over. Max, can we talk? Yes, only let's step aside. In Max's house, I had a strange power and a sort of intuition. 
Now some decisions will develop Mia's abilities. Some increase her gift of blood, speed of reactions, and physical strength. Others, gift of moon, hearing, hypnosis, and intuition. Think about which one is more important for your heroine. I'm going to go gift of the moon. It's just more my speed. Um, I'm not a violent person. <laughs> for the most part. Um, yeah. Uh, probably a different playthrough. I'll do the gift of blood, but for on this one, we're going to do the gift of the moon. I wonder if I can control this. Concentrate on listening. At first, the rustling of grass and the hum of the cars on the road became louder. After a couple of seconds, the girl heard a quiet conversation. There, there are several steps between us, but it is as though I'm standing next to them. It seems I can't listen for a long time, but for now, she can make out every word. What are you doing? What do you think? I'm taking her to our house, of course. A vampire? Sean, you owe her your life. I know, but she saved me while she was a human. And soon she will be... So stupid, Sean. Not all vampires are enemies. Explain it to your grandfather. There won't be any problem with that. And my father? He owes her now. Damn. I'm in deep trouble. No, I promised to look after you, so I'm guilty. I bled that too. Is everything so serious? Things cannot be more serious. Then I'll do it myself. No, you're still young and Ralph should take care of the pack. Well, that tells you a lot right there. <laughs> what kind of pack? I'm in trouble. For sure I went to the movies. Damn. Exactly. The ghoul knew that you would go to the cafe from the cinema. They followed us. Planned it. But what will we, will we answer? There are too many of them here. More than wolves. What? What wolves is he talking about? No, no, this cannot be. Wolves on top of everything? Nonsense. Oh, well, the only thing missing are witches, elves, and Merlin. About the girl, there is something off about her. She's indifferent to the sunlight. Maybe it's still too early? I don't know, maybe. Nonsense, I've lost my mind. Or not? Mia's head spun, the world plunged into darkness. <laughs> the last few days, the girl had either slept too little or her life was under threat. She passed the day in a completely feverish state. But now, waking up in an unfamiliar room, she felt just fine. Maybe I dreamed it, and nobody bit me. So... I'm learning about this is Max's room, so you can kind of get some ideas of like the kind of guy he is, and like sports and stuff. Of course, we have a little wolf there. <laughs> Do some adventuring. Probably some pictures of him and Sean. I don't know who that girl is. That a dog? I don't know. Family, white river rafting, skateboarding. That's pretty cool. Anyway, maybe I dreamed it. Nobody bit me. It would be nice, and it would be nice to find out where I am. Breakfast is waiting on the table. Milk, juice, toast, salad, cheese, meat, and a couple of bananas and chocolate. First, Mia went to the mirror, no marks on her neck. Then she ate with great appetite. That was a cute little breakfast. <laughs> and what do we have here? View the photo on the wall, inspect the awards on the shelf. Um, let's look at the photo. There was a, a teenager in the pictures. In some pictures, he was alone, and others accompanied by peers, scouts, or some kind of outdoorsman. In any case, there were tents, backpacks, and forests everywhere. Mm. The guy in the photo, it was Max, only younger. I didn't dream it, so Sean is real too. And the vampire who bit me, it all happened. Mia's handbag was lying on the bed and the girl took out her phone. She wanted to call Victor, but suddenly stopped. Stop. Judging from what Sean and Max said, they have some kind of conflict with vampires. I'll call, and what will Victor do? Will he come here? But who knows, um, who knows how that could turn out. First, I need to figure it out. And make sure that Max and Sean are... What? Wolves? Werewolves? Someone knocked delicately on the door. Come in. Mia was expecting to see the owner of the room, but Sean appeared first. Hi, did you wake up? How are you? Have you eaten? It's good. Anything else you need? Nothing, thank you, I'm fine. That's just unlikely. What do you mean? 
Sean, get lost, huh? You act like a child. She already got it, and you're still trying to scare her. The boy looked at Max, frowning. I'm not a kid, and I'll prove it. Yeah, prove it later, okay? Mia, thanks for saving me. <laughs> Sean swiftly left the room. He's adorable. He's worried about being saved by a girl. What's wrong with me? Don't listen to him. Max, I'm not stupid. There are no bite marks on my neck. Have they healed? That's too fast. You are turning. I'm sorry, Mia. And what now? What will happen to me? Will I be a vampire? You should talk to my older brother. All right. Max looked into her eyes. Whatever happens, I will not leave you. I need to freshen up. All right. I'll wait outside. Finding herself alone, Mia turned back to the mirror. A little freshening up couldn't hurt. Oh, I'm getting more, more clothing choices. Um, we have a cute little ponytail. Oh, no, it's light. Oh, I kind of like it in chestnut, too. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cute. Pixie cut. Oh, goodness. Um, I'm just gonna go with this long one. Um, apparently I liked it before, too. <laughs> that's okay. I can go out like that. That's better. I'm talking about the hair. Really? No, of course it's true. Why do you doubt it? And in general, you look livelier. Mia looked at the high sun. Don't worry, it shouldn't harm you. It's too early. Um, Max was visibly embarrassed. He was clearly uncomfortable saying this to Mia. The transformation is not over. You're not a vampire yet. And even then, the sun will not kill you. I know. Your vampire friends told you? Yes. This is my brother. Ralph, this is Mia. Oh! Goodness. He's gorgeous, too. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Good afternoon. Sit down. We have to talk. I don't like how this is starting. First of all, I want to thank you for Sean. You saved my son, and I won't forget that. Mia just nodded. Now, as far as your condition, how to explain? There is one problem with your transformation into a vampire. Um. Uh. I feel like the let's be honest one leads into something a little bit more forceful. I don't know. Maybe this one? I understand. I'm a stranger here. You know about vampires, but apparently you're not afraid of them. You're not happy that I'm here and you're thinking about how to escort me delicately. I certainly helped Sean, but I am now a vampire and you are... Malf and Ra Ralph. Max and Ralph exchange glances. Who? Werewolves? Am I right? Everything is a bit more complicated. Why do you think we're werewolves? I heard the conversation between Max and Sean. Ralph looked displeased with his brother, who looked away. And also, these carved pillars in the yard. Wolves, right? Mia was ready for Ralph to call her crazy and call in a psychiatrist. However, he nodded. Well... We are human, and we have a long-standing feud with the vampires. But speaking about the problem of your transformation, I meant something else. You're not a vampire. There was something wrong with the turner. Do you want to say that I got sick? Like a flu? I have not heard of such a thing. Even if it were possible to get over it, this is not what's happening to you, Mia. I don't know if I should call you human. You have changed. Mia lacked the mental energy to go into hysterics or wring her hands and cry. She just waited for what they would say next. You're definitely not a vampire. Definitely not. H how have I changed? What does it mean? Fast regeneration. You're sent. Not a human. And not a vampire. It doesn't get easier. During the transformation, vampires react to sunlight. You f they fell uneasy. You behave normally. Finally, thanks. What? Mia started to fill her teeth with her tongue. She didn't find anything strange and was ready to stick her finger into her mouth. <laughs> In the sense that you don't have them. I checked while you were blacked out. I'm sorry. Um, I don't really want to be their, their enemy. I'm definitely not your enemy. So there's something vampire-like in me. I do not want to quarrel with the whole family of wolves or with the pack. We often say pack, but the word family is quite applicable. 
You are not our enemy, Mia. Probably not everyone will like you, but you would not become an enemy. You experience a great shock, stress if you like. Live with us. Come to your senses. Make sure you are not attacking people. What's next? You decide next. She paused. Mia? I will stay for a while. Great. You're safe here. It would be great if I did not pose a threat to myself. Don't worry about it. We will control the situation. Come on. Air out. Okay. Interesting. So a vampire, but not. <laughs> Do not worry. We will make sense of it. Walk in the sun more often, and you will be quite human. Do you like to tan? Thank you for not leaving me there at the store. Are you in your right mind after all? Who would I be after that? I was waiting for Sean at the cafe. He came running and said what happened, and I immediately rushed there. And we will still find that fang creature. Why do you have a conflict with vampires? Mia, yeah, it's complicated. Because they're bad. Are you good? Yes. Don't I look good? <laughs> when you get to know me better, you will be delighted on the whole. Max, I'm seriously asking. Who's joking? Rose are all cool. I see. There will be no answer. Suddenly, Mia felt someone's presence. She whispered, Max, someone is watching us. I don't feel anyone. Who could be here? Over there, behind the bushes. Max peered in the indicated direction. No one is there. This is our territory, Mia. If a stranger was here, we would know. You know better, of course. I guess I imagined it. Do you have a big territory here? Mia looked around. Everything you see is our land. <laughs> I don't know why they reminded me of like <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. When they're sitting on the rock and then... I, don't, I, don't, I forget where they were sitting, but he's like, you know, everything that the light touches. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. We bought a part of the forest and surrounded it with a fence. We do not like prying eyes. Could someone see something they are not supposed to? Something like that. So, there are no strangers here, right? Right, don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. The girl stopped gazing at the bushes, past which they had just passed. Sean, come out! What? The branches rustled. A young wolf cub came out onto the path. He did not look very embarrassed. My feelings did not deceive me. Sean, you bastard. What were you doing there? Just walking by. And when I heard you, I stopped. I didn't want to interfere. You would get some for telling lies. Come on, Max. Maybe it was like that. The boy looked at Mia. Are you a vampire now? I don't know. Ralph doesn't think so. But you realize that I was there. You have a vampire scent. The sun. What are you talking about? Their abilities do not work in the light of the sun. Damn it, that's true. Watch your tongue, Sean. Yes, it's weird. The girl leaned over and picked up a thick branch. She gripped it tightly with both hands. Crunch. Mia tossed aside the two pieces of the branch, shaking off her hands. Before, I wouldn't be able to break it. This is not a vampire pyre, of course, but it's cool for a girl. I don't understand this. Grandfather will be shocked. I don't think that even he has heard about this. Sean, did you go for a walk? So go on. Walk. Oh, come on. I didn't see the kiss. <laughs> Gave Sean a hard slap. The kid was not upset. He went all smiling and winked at <laughs> He's adorable. Sorry, he's at that age. That's okay. So, you and Ralph are brothers. Sean is your nephew. There's still a grandfather. Yours or Sean's? Mine. Sean's great grandfather. We have a big family. Helen lives here, Ralph's wife. My sister Audrey and Uncle John. The rest of our kin are in Canada. Tell me about werewolves. What do you like? What do you have against vampires? Please, Max. Since I got myself into the story, it would be good to figure everything out. If this is not a secret, of course. I wonder why your vampire friends didn't tell you everything. Me too. We do not know where and when vampires appear in the world. Werewolves have always been there. The first known meaning happened a few centuries ago. There was yet another war in Europe. Flashback. Stepping over corpses and wiping swords, two men entered the main hall of an old castle. Their boots left bloody footprints on the floor. 
We have captured a beautiful castle. What do you say? My pups will like it here. Von Diels turned to the fighters awaiting orders outside the door. Warriors, search everything. Anything of value, bring it here. The booze, if you find any, it's yours. Thank you, sir. Did you hear, guys? Sir Vons gives you all the wine that is here. Forward. Delighted warriors, unaware of who they serve, happily shy and rush through the corridors. It could not be any easier. I like fighting with these people. Fast, profitable, and fun. I agree. This is much better than the fight in the spring. That pack fiercely defended his territory and died a glorious death. Spit on their glory. They killed my brother. We'll keep him in our memories. The knight took a flask of Rhine wine, took a sip, and handed it to his friend. But the second did not have a time to drink. From the staircase leading to the second floor came a heart-rending cry. What's going on there? The devil! This is the lair of the devil himself! A frightened warrior appeared on the steps. His face was white as chalk. There was a horror in his eyes as if he had indeed seen the whore lord of hell. Run! Run, my lord! The cry broke off when a rapid shadow flashed behind Oryx's back. What the hell? The stone stairs were painted in red blood. Other fighters were already rushing into the hall. At the top of the stairs, a man stood calmly. De Loconte. The Loconte castle belongs to me, and uninvited guests are not welcome here. All of you have to die. Right now, gentlemen. Waving swords, soldiers rushed at the castle's owner. There were nearly two dozen warriors, but none of them could even hurt him. The owner of the Leconte castle moved with superhuman speed, scattering fighters like ragdolls, tearing their necks with his um, fangs and breaking their bones with his bare fists, even through the metal armor. Damn it, who is that? Von Diels cursed foully. The knights, without saying a word, threw their swords away. There were fewer warriors by the second. Screams of high pain echoed off the high vaulted ceilings. I hate doing this in armor. The knight became broader in the shoulders. Their faces began to stretch forward. In the next instant, the straps holding the armor burst. Iron plates fell to the floor. Iron links shattered in different directions. Both knights growled, covered in gray fur. I just remember that some of them don't stand. It's because he's a lot younger. There was blood on the floor, on the walls, everywhere. What is that? De La Conte let go of the last of the warriors, and the ladder rolled over the railing, collapsed under the stairs. And they called me a monster. Are you a demon? <laughs> you won't believe me, but I had the same question. For a few seconds, the vampire and the werewolves met at each other, then they clashed in the fight. De La Conte was faster and stronger, but there were two wolves, which leveled the odds. Get out of here, dogs. A powerful blow and Bon Bon flew into a corner. <laughs> First, I'll tear off your head. Von Diel snapped his teeth and blood spurted from a huge wound on De La Conte's side. The wolf had already risen, bypassing the enemy from behind. The master of the castle, however, also looked quite capable of containing the fight. The wound was magically healed. Who are you? Armel de la Conte, a vampire, whom did I have the honor to fight with? We are werewolves. From now on, these are our hunting grounds. You cannot cope with the whole pack. Alone, perhaps. However, gentlemen, I am not alone. Sorry, I don't understand what your flea-ridden friend is barking about there. You drink the blood of people. Why? That's my diet. However, that's none of your business. It looks like your kind is interested in our prey. We will destroy you. Let's get it over with. My castle has already started to develop a dog stink. You lousy gargoyle. I'll shove those words back into your dirty throat. So how did that end? Do you hunt people? No more than people hunt each other. I get it. It's not often that you will find vampires who do not kill people. It's the opposite with us. It used to be different. In the old days, people were far less civilized. 
So how did the first meeting end? The vampires took over the castle. Then a pack king came in there. A long war began and we destroyed each other viciously. Finally, the parties decided it was time to think about negotiations. They chose the most authoritative representative and agreed to meet. And how did that go? They divided the land, but the contract was constantly violated. The vampires are proud, arrogant, werewolves always avenge their own. There's still a conflict, but the times are not the same. What does that mean? Wolves and vampires, as you see, begin to live together. Although not everyone likes it. Vampires are hungry. And you? At first, the lycanthrope turns into a wolf only on a full moon and cannot control itself, hunting for, for all but their own. Ones born with lycanthropy get over this stage while still in their cradle. It's hard with the bitten ones. You have to watch them. In general, we turn when we want. We also live a long time. Our health is good. My head is spinning. You're well brought up, and here I was expecting interjections and swearing. We need to change the subject. Come, let me show you our store. Family business. Goods for tourism, hunting, and other outdoor activities. Are you good at all that? Of course. He's my grandfather. Come, meet him. Max's grandfather came out from behind the counter, limping heavily on his left foot. Oh, he's adorable. Look at him. I like him. Call me Conrad. Hello, I'm Mia. I already know. Glad to talk with such a brave girl. Mia, are you interested in all these tents, campfires, and coppices? Um, yep. Totally. One of ours. Well done. Unfortunately, I rarely get out. It's never too late to catch up. I'll show you where everything is here. And you tell me what you do. Do you mind? Not at all. That's nice. You will entertain an old man. Conrad turned out to be a great conversationalist. He knew a lot of jokes and asked me about journalism in college with genuine interest. Putting Max behind the counter, Conrad chatted with her, treating her to some fragrant herbal tea. Oh, nice. The girl did not notice how time flew by. It was getting dark. Ralph entered the store. How are you? Is Sean with you? No, he did not stop by. This is bad. Ralph's look became intense. What's the matter? Sean is nowhere to be found, and he left his phone at home. Easy. If vampires came for him, we would know, right? Yes, but Sean did not say that he was going somewhere. I can't pick up his trail. His scent ends at the house. Grandfather? Go. I will look after Mia. Mia stayed with Conrad. The old wolf looked puzzled. Has this not happened before? Not once. They'll find Sean? Ralph will go to the pack. Together they will find him, of course. I don't understand. Why wouldn't he say he was going somewhere? Mia did not know how to comfort the old werewolf and perplexed looked away. Some photos caught her eye. She recognized Sean and Max and two of them. These two have a close relationship. Max often spends time with his nephew. The first photo was in a forest glade. Sean smiles proudly standing over a dead boar. On the second, they swim in a river. A boy surrounded by splashes of water laughs and looks generally happy. Mia had a vague guess in her mind. It was Max who took Sean to hunt for the first time, and here he's teaching him to swim. Wait, wait. Sean, how is he? Serious or the opposite? A hooligan? I would not call him very responsible. Serious, yes. He keeps his word. He is in a hurry to grow up. And where were these pictures taken? Not far. Past the house, along the path further into the forest. And then the glade is to the right, and the river is to the left. Oh, wait. Hold on. The glade is to the right, and that's where the boar was, and the river is to the left where we were swimming. We have a good hunt here, and the water is clean. I'll be back soon. Careful in the forest. This is not a city park. Mia ran out into the path. In a couple of minutes, she was already at the fork. Where did Conrad say to go? Well, all he told me was that the river was left, and the glade was right. I'm going to go... Right. Because he wanted to prove himself. The girl ran towards the forest glade. Sean wanted to prove that he was no longer a child. He could go hunting alone. Mia looked around. Some choices required the largest possible value of fortitude diplomacy. Uh oh. Um, no one. What's next? 
Um, okay, so I need fortitude in order to persevere and continue to search. Am I gonna go back to the store? Let me inspect the glade. Maybe I could at least understand if he was here at all. Mia walked around the glade, no traces. I'm not a scout. What do I hope to find? It's a waste of time. I have to go back. Um, be patient and wait. Confirm your strong diplomacy skills. You're always in restrained and reasonable. Maybe he will come here later on. After a while, the girl heard a rustle. Sean? Is that you? A huge wild boar came out into the glade. Seeing me, it stamped his hooves. Oh, God. Look at that thing. It was a no joke. Damn it. Its sharp curved tucks looked frightening. I'm not threatening it, so it won't touch me, right? It probably had a different opinion about the situation. The boar rushed at the girl. She dodged the first attack, bouncing sideways behind the tree. The evil animal spun around, plowing the turf with its hooves, accelerating again. A gray shadow rushed from the depths of the forest. Oh my god. I don't remember seeing his little wolf form. A wolf hit the boar with his chest, and the boar tumbled over at Mia's feet. Oh. The predator closed his jaws on the thick neck of the boar. Mia backed against a tree, scared. The wolf raised his bloody muzzle, looking at her. The look was not bestial. Expressive. Human, even. And then the wolf winked at the girl and ran to the forest. Now I definitely believe in werewolves. Sean appeared from the same direction where the wolf retreated. Scare? It was me. He winked again. What are you doing here? I'm looking for you. Everyone is looking for you. Your father would kill you. Damn. You better get back soon. I took down a monster like this, and yet again, a girl helped. You distracted the boar. Damn, I can't even take the credit. You just don't, don't get any ideas. I could have done it myself. Sean, are you a fool? The vampire wanted to kill you, and then you went God knows where? Everyone is going crazy, and you're all having fun? Oops, I didn't think. Go to the house. Say that everything is fine. I'm right behind you. Can't leave the meat. Connor was waiting by the porch. Mia shot it from afar. It's all good. I found him. <laughs> Jesus, look at that face. And where is he? Right behind me. Dragging his catch. Shell was hunting. I could have guessed myself. Oh, I'll show him. And then his father will give him a beating. Then his mother. I think Max will jump on it too. <laughs> Pretty much Sean is in trouble big time. Conrad called Ralph and the rest. The hunter soon appeared and the old werewolf silently led him into the house. About five minutes later, Max came. Where did you find him? Remember, Sean promising to prove that he was already an adult? Mia told him everything. A boy is not only 100 kilograms of good meat, but also in some serious trouble. Why didn't you use your abilities? I don't know. I was confused. No good. I'll have to teach you. It's probably not my business, but... Speak. I don't think you should punish Sean too harshly. Why? His act is nonsense, of course, but... This is also kind of your fault. How so? Well, Sean treats you like an older brother. You're an example for him in everything. He's even jealous of you. Do you remember how he snuck up on us? Are you an expert in child psychology? It's obvious. He went on this stupid hunt just to impress you. And you, since you spent a lot of time with your nephew, better teach him something other than running through the woods. Sean needs an example of responsibility and forethought. Damn. Mia, who do you think you are to lecture me? I had the best intentions. Okay, okay. I'll talk to Ralph. <laughs> the girl looked past Max. Someone is coming, Ralph? Two cars were approaching the house. The headlights were visible from afar. No. Maybe Taurus come in the shop? Perhaps they want to fish in the middle of the night and are looking for the fishing rods. Could happen, right? Go into the house, Mia. Should not argue. <laughs> The girl observed through the window what was happening in the courtyard. Black SUVs stopped in front of the Max and people got out of them. Guys, are you completely insolent? Do you realize where you are? 
It's freaking Howard. What's <laughs> a drink in his hand? <laughs> Good evening, Wolf. We need to talk. And I think that is the end of season one. Wow. Okay. Um. <laughs> So, you know, we're basically we're on the diplomacy track. Um, we're going to be building up our gift of the moon and doing more of that business. You kind of can see that more in action pretty fairly soon, actually, um, when I start up season two. Um, let's just go back to the main page um, so we can see where we are. Oh, wait, there's a bonus episode? Oh, what? <laughs> I mean, I can skip it. Um, this is season two. Um, I didn't know there was a bonus episode. If I had known there was a bonus episode, I would have just did seven and eight and then nine in the bonus episode. <laughs> Whoops, this video is long enough as it is. I guess I have to do the bonus episode by itself. This is a long video. It's like, it's like been almost two hours. Um, I'm wondering if I shouldn't just do it all right now. Um... I don't know. Huh. I want to ask you guys' opinion. <laughs> it's not like you're here. Um, shoot, 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 shoot. Bonus episode, huh? Okay. Um, you know what? I'll just use that as an intro into season one. Uh, into season two. Um, yeah, and I'll just combine that with uh, episodes one and two of season two. And we'll do a whole another three episode bit there as well. I don't want this one to drag on too much longer. But anyway, <laughs> um, just like let me know what you thought of the season. Um, it it, get, it it gets pretty crazy from here. Um, and season one they were just kind of finding the ground. It it really picks up in season two, and it gets pretty wild. Um, I'm excited. So um, to see about um where Mia goes from here, um, to learn about her abilities, what's going on with her. Um, that's always interesting to learn more about Max, um, now that he's been introduced. Um, yeah. So, and just so you know that this playthrough is going to be a Max playthrough because I, I love Max and you'll soon see why. But anyway, <laughs> um, if you liked the video guys, go ahead and give us some love. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!